found any part of Christmas more expensive than expected or experienced stress over the Christmas budget, then this trick will help you make every Xmas to come so much easier. Let me talk you through the process step by step. It's a system I use every year and it works so well. Step one, categorize. The advantage to doing this close to Christmas is that you should have the numbers fresh in your mind. Maybe even the receipts to get exact figures. With that in mind, think about all the areas that you spent money for anything to do with Christmas. Think back because the costs can start earlier than you think. To help you out, here are some of the expenses of Christmas that often get forgotten about. School costs. If you have kids, then they will want to spend some money. This will range from little donations for Xmas jumper day to boxes of chocolates for their favorite teachers. Don't forget about the bulk pack of cards for all their classmates either. The office party. If you work for a company that will put on a Christmas party, then don't think it will be a free night. Even if you're lucky enough to get all your food and drinks covered for the evening, who is that lucky? <laughs> you might still spend money on things like new clothes for the occasion, or a taxi ride there and back, gifts for colleagues, or some pre and post drinks with those colleagues that you actually want to see. Socialising. Forgetting the big day, I find myself being much more social on the lead up to Christmas too. Getting in some chocolates or biscuits as snacks if you're hosting, meals and drinks out if you arrange to go somewhere, perhaps fuel and travel expenses to see those friends and family members further away. These costs can add up and when they aren't budgeted for, that can be a problem. Make as many categories as you need to. If it's an area you spend a lot in, then breaking it into subcategories can help too. For example, gifting. Separating your gifting budget into close family, extended family, friends, colleagues, school friends, and anyone else you might buy for. You probably won't spend as much on the kind crossing lady on the way to school as your mum or dad. So having subsections for the gifting budget will help. Step two, number crunching. Once you have each category sorted, now is the time to write in the numbers. Add up everything you paid into each section. If you're unsure if it's worth adding in, then I'd say just do it. Having a higher number here could leave you with a little bonus next year. Being as accurate as possible, add up everything you've spent over this period and write it all down into the right sections. Step three, sinking funds. Good news, you've done all the work now. It's time to reap the rewards. Well, set yourself up to be rewarded next year and every year after that anyway. I'd suggest keeping the numbers to their categories, but you can add it all up now if you'd rather streamline it. You may be surprised at how much Christmas actually costs when you think about it all. Take the number and divide it by 12. Yes, it's a simple concept. Nothing new in the world of personal finance, but don't let that allow you to neglect it. Putting this money aside each month is so much easier than thinking about it and stressfully getting it together from November or December's paydays. Think about how it will work next year. Each time you come to a Christmas expense, buying a gift or that use matching Xmas pajamas, the money is already there. No need to have it playing on your mind, stressing about the cost or feeling guilty spending it. It's there already and it's been put aside for this exact reason. No cutting back and great peace of mind. Thinking like this is a great way to stay motivated. If you want more tips on sticking to a plan and not losing motivation to make sure you see your goals through to the end every time, then check out this video over here. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. It makes the world of difference. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.